worship with us this morning. Why don't y'all come on down here and raise your hands as we pray. If you're watching online, we are so glad you're joining. Get up and pray. someone still out there that wants to come down. So I want to invite you one more time. We are here to receive his blessings. We're here to receive his mercies. God has so much for you today. So I just hope that you are ready to receive it. Let's sing that again. Just our voices.
moments nothing can church we're going to teach you guys an original song this morning you know we've been talking um, in weeks past about the character of God and this song that we're going to be singing this morning just talks about the character of God and just being thankful for who he is so listen to me sing this and then sing it with me worship him this morning.
I love how you come up and just say, well, we come up with an original. But what they don't know is, is that Daniel has taken where the Holy Spirit has been leading us. And he said, you know, Pastor Joe, I've got an idea for a song. And I want to write a song about where we're headed. I didn't think much about it. I heard him out here on a Monday morning playing. I was like, what is that? And it just gave me chills. This is a man that listens to the Holy Spirit. That's an amazing song. Thank you for your obedience and listening. It's just one example. One example of being led by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said, Daniel, I want you to write a song. He didn't back away from it. He didn't go, I don't know, I've never written a song before. I don't know how. He just did it. And because he did, the kingdom's been blessed, we've been blessed, and we know, we know more about God's character now by confessing what his character is. And you guys are going to see this in a minute. But basically everything that Daniel wrote and sang is an exact copy of my notes from today. So let's go home. Can we give God a round of applause? His Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is that good. You know, and this is a time of excitement. I'm excited to be here with you today. And the reason I'm excited to be here with you today is because the Holy Spirit is in this place. God loves us. God is here. And we can take that. We can take that. We can take this moment and turn it into something good we get to make the decision for that. So I'm going to ask you to grab the hand of the person next to you. And I'm going to have McCall speak over us this morning. hearts are open and our minds are ready to receive the word that you have for us today. Lord, these are your people. We are your people. And we are here looking to be transformed from the inside out. Father, thank you that you have never left us. You have never forsaken us. You will not leave us. If you are for us, no man can be against us. I thank you, Jesus, that you have a plan and a purpose for each one of us to prosper us, to lead us where you would have us go, Father. And I just speak that over every single one of 
these amazing, beautiful people in this room today. Lord, we are here. Our hearts are open. We are ready. Father God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are with us. Our hearts are steady. Our minds are open. You have given us words and we act on them. We are doers of the word. We do not live in fear. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. And Father, I just thank you so much that as we are joined together, Lord, that we are reminded of your love, your steadfast love for each one of us. Thank you, Jesus, for sending your son because you love us. And we, you are meeting us right where we're at. Father, we thank you that when we do kneel down to pray, that you hear us. That when we need comfort, you speak words over us. And we receive those words. When we're not okay, you're there. When we're happy, you're there. Father, we just thank you, thank you, thank you for this amazing day. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the joy. Lord, we bless you, love you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit's impressing on me this morning that there's some people in this room that need to be lifted up. So in this time of stepping out and in this time of us being bold, I want you to find a couple people that are around you. And I just want you to to lift them up. I want you to put a hand on their shoulder and say, God loves you. Or maybe the Holy Spirit's going to impress on you something else to say to them. And guys, I know this can be uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable uh, for me. I've gone to pastor's conferences, and one of the times that I, I the, the main guy will go, well, we're going we're gonna to stretch an arm out. We're going to, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. But this is what we're called to do. We're called to be a witness. We're called to be a witness that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we're going to be obedient. And I don't know what that looks like. And I love that I don't know what it looks like. Because sometimes I think as a church, we get into the mold of the three songs in the message, and then we're off to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Let's take those. You remember in math, we learned about absolutes the bars that are on each side of the number, let's take those absolutes off for just a minute. And let's take a small step together. And let's lift somebody up. Can we do that? Let's do it. Daniel?
give my life to you. And I give my life to you. I trust you to see me through. Spirit, come fill me with your love and your mercy, your grace and compassion. Go Hallelujah. Isn't that good? I don't know about you guys, but I, that's what I come to church for. I just got prayed for. I'm good. I'm good. Let's go home. There is a pastor that, um, his last name is Grace. Some of you guys, if you watch TBN and and he said something, he said something to us as a group of pastors um, one time at a conference. And I've said this before, and he said, you know what I do? He goes, I make sure that I get more than what I come for every time I step foot in church. And he said, that is the most exciting thing to me, is walking out of church getting more than what I came for. I like that. Who's in here with me this morning that's willing to get more than what they came for. I don't know what you came for this morning. But I came to get a word. I came to see the Holy Spirit move. If not on me, one of you guys. I'm gonna get more. Because I can sit at home and watch church on TV if I don't expect more. And it's not a greed thing something you get at coming to church. So if you have a seat, I'm going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and by his blood. And Lord, we come boldly with a grace, favor, and mercy this morning. Lord, we came with expectant hearts. We came for more. We came for everything that we can take away with us this morning. Lord, I thank you for encounters that have happened through worship. I thank you for encounters that have happened by the laying on of hands. Lord, I thank you for encounters that are going to happen through your word. Your word is living. It is alive, and it is the truth. And your word says that where there is spirit and truth, God shows up and he seeks us. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you think about that? Really? Throughout your day that God seeks you. Do you know that? God seeks you. That is what God desires for us. For us to have the revelation that God continually seeks us. But if we're honest with one another, it's easy to see 
that even Christians today have a very hard time with that concept. Because somewhere down the line, whether it was in a third grade Sunday school class or a sixth grade, you know, youth trip, somebody said something that stuck with us. Somebody told us that when we screw up, God's going to get us. And out of all of the great messages we've heard and all of the great worship services that we have been in that completely speak against that, somehow... We think that God is still out to get us. You know, Pastor Jay used to say in, in church here all the time, if God was out to get you, he would have already got you. Some of us are older, some of us are 70, and we're waiting for God. When is it? Hey, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for him to get it. When's it going to happen? What sense does that make? It doesn't. It doesn't, yet we hold on to some of that bad theology. I'm believing that we get to finish the message today. And at the end of the day, this is what I am believing that you guys are hold on to. You're going to hold on to. Where I want to get to is this. I want to get to a place that we understand that faith is a byproduct of God's love. Faith is a byproduct of God's love, which is his character. Now, I'm going to show you how that works. So let's dive into that. This semester, we learned that when we are baptized into Jesus, we have a new nature. And then we took that a little bit further, and we started to learn about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then we learned that when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, God gives us these new abilities. So our spirit is made new, our spirit is made perfect, and then on top of that, God tops it off. He puts the bow on it with giving us some new abilities so that we can minister and so that we can witness to the ones that are outside this door, or maybe somebody that's in here. That's what Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is at, is for us to be a witness that is empowered. So now that we're empowered, and we can look at this a lot of different ways, and we can look at it from different angles, but when it comes back to it, when we look at our new nature and we look at the abilities that God has given us, what we can really do is we can wrap that up in a nice, neat little package and say, you know what, now that I am one with God, now that I am spirit to spirit with God, I now possess the character of God. Now, I've said this before, please don't misunderstand me. If you're online, please don't misunderstand me. I did not say that we are God. But we were made in his image and his likeness, and we now possess his spirit, and we now possess his character. So you, to sum all this up, if you don't know what your character is, you can simply say, I have the character of loving kindness. My true character is love. Why? Why? Because I was made in the image and likeness of my father, and his character is of loving kindness. We need to know this as Christians. Our character matters. Our character matters. Have you ever thought about that? As a Christian, our character matters. What is the definition of character? Character, if you look at the Webster's Dictionary, it is simply our mental and moral qualities. Our mental and moral qualities. So what are your mental and moral qualities? Galatians 5.22. Love, joy, peace, kindness. All of those things that show us what God's character is. So God has a character. God has a character, has character, not a character, but he does have character. And what is that character? God's character is loving kindness. God's character is loving kindness. How do we know this? 
because in the Old Testament and the New Testament, directly and indirectly, it's listed over 250 times that his character is loving kindness. The Holy Spirit wanted us to make sure, and the Holy Spirit worked through the writers of the Bible to make sure that we understood that God's character is loving kindness. So if God's character is loving kindness, and we're going to define that in just a few minutes, why would he be out to get you? Right? Why would he be out to get you? If God's character was to get you and to break one of your legs, why wouldn't he break both of them? If God's character was to catch you when you mess up and to take one of your children, why doesn't he take all of them? I mean, if you're going to do a great job, why not do a really good job? It doesn't make sense. It goes against Scripture. God's character is of loving kindness. And whether you realize it or not, and whether you want it or not, your character is now of loving kindness. And if you present anything that is not of loving kindness, you have to work at it, and it's a falsity. If you are born again and you are born in the Holy Spirit, anything that doesn't come out of of loving kindness, you have to work at. You have to make a mental decision to do. That'll preach. Because you think about every time you've had a fit of carnality or you've exercised it as something not out of the character of God, you had to mentally and physically do it yourself. Those cuss words do not come out automatically. I'm sorry. They don't. The only thing that comes out of your mouth that is not thought of are tongues. Lines up with Scripture. So what is your character? Are you with me in counter church? Let's take a quick review back. Turn with me to Psalm 107 and 43. I like this. Whosoever is wise will observe these things, and they will understand the loving kindness of of the Lord. So what we want to do today is by revelation we want to get the loving kindness of God. Those who are wise. Who is that? Who's that talking about? That's talking about us. And he is saying those that go to encounter church are going to be wise from this point forward because by revelation, because of my word, because of my love, they are truly going to understand who I am. And when they understand who I am, they're going to understand who they are. And then we're going to connect. And then they're going to be able to really start to receive from me. I thought that was going to go over a little bit better than it did. We are a organization, Christians are an organization of people who don't understand who they are and they don't understand who the leader is. We're really good at acting like we know who he is and we're really good at acting like what we think we're supposed to be, but when it comes down to it, we really don't. And the reason I know that we really don't is because we have so much doubt and unbelief in the church today. If we truly understood who we were, what our true character was, and who, what God's character was, and knowing that faith is a byproduct of love, and if we could see how much God, God actually loved us, our faith level would grow through the roof. And our altar calls would change from coming down and having prayers to have a need met to prayers of joy and glorifying, and magnifying. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be awesome if we had an altar call down here one Sunday after church, and the only thing that was spoken 
was the glory of God, how great his glory is. is. Magnifying God for who he is. What would that look like? I don't know because I ain't seen it. But I'm going to preach my heart out today to get us there. Loving kindness. If you haven't already highlighted that, highlight that in your Bible. So what does loving kindness really encompass? It's God's loving kindness that makes forgiveness possible. Isn't that good? Anybody in here struggle with unforgiveness? When we backslide or we fall away, it's God's loving kindness that allows us to remain in relationship with him. Isn't it awesome that every time that we backslide or we walk away, we don't have to come down and make Jesus Lord of our life again and get in the cold baptistry? (laughs) It's God's loving kindness that makes relationship possible. It's God's loving kindness that opens the floodgates of blessing on our lives. We need to understand that we are blessed. I am blessed and you are blessed and those blessings are a a direct relation to the loving kindness of God. If we can't put that correlation together, if we don't understand that we are blessed because of God's loving kindness, then we are in the camp of those that say, I'm just lucky. Would you rather be lucky or would you rather be blessed? And we're not going to take the route on where luck came from. But it allows, God's loving kindness allows for intimacy with him Guys, calm down. With him to be possible. It's God's loving kindness that makes our righteousness and holiness possible. Are we intimate with God? Truly, do you have an intimate relationship with God? It's a fair question. It's a fair question because if you remember two weeks ago, I said one of the hardest questions that I have to answer in my office is why. And a lot of the reasons why we ask why is because we're not intimate with God. When you're intimate with somebody, it means that you're close with them. And those that are close, they share things. Right? McCall's always trying to share something with me. We like to say that we're intimate with God, and we like to say that we're close with God. But something inside of me tells me that we're just not where we need to be. We looked at some examples last week, and I gave you some real-life examples of people that should have been intimate together, but they weren't. They wanted nothing to do with one another. Why is that? The reason is it's hard for us to be intimate with those that we think are going to hurt us. We don't want to be intimate with somebody who we think will hurt us. Right? So if by definition God wants to be intimate with us, why would he want to hurt us? It doesn't make sense. 
We can't say that God is an intimate God and God wants to be intimate with us and then turn right back around and go, my goodness, I just ran a stop sign. He's going to break my leg today. Or I stub my toe and I kick the cat and he's going to give me cancer. It can't work that way. It can't. Yet we continue to think that. We continue to go through life content with the fact that just I'm going to win some, I'm going to lose some, and God's going to get me every now and then. I don't care what the example is. If me and Steve want to be best friends, and I want to be best friends with him, but I know in two weeks, man, he's going to knock my lights out. I'm sorry, brother, but I'm not taking you to lunch. <laughs> Even if it's the greatest two weeks I've ever had in my life, I ain't taking you to lunch. It's what keeps us from opening our Bible. It's what keeps us from coming to church. It's what keeping us from coming to a connect group. The repercussions of it go on and on and on because we are so afraid of being hurt by the one and only true person that loves you according to his character. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm so glad my parents, they had us in church when we were kids. And I'll forget, we were at the, we were at the Church of Christ in Canyon. And the main congregation kind of sat like y'all did, and the, the youth sat over on the side, kind of angled towards the pastor. And I'd forgotten all about this. And it was one of the first times that I felt like God really spoke to me. He showed me, and he showed me a vision of me behind the pulpit at the church. And I've forgotten all about this. And I'll never forget how scared I was when I saw that. Number one, it went against everything that I believed as a 13-year-old. Because as a 13-year-old, I was going to go and be the youngest winner at Top Gun. I was going to be the hottest fighter pilot this country had ever seen. So I didn't have time to be behind the pulpit. And if that didn't work, I wanted to be a highway patrol. So time goes on, and I forget about that. And I get into college, and I join a fraternity, and we do the fraternity things. But I'll never forget in our fraternity, and I don't know why, but we had a chaplain. And one Sunday night, after a fraternity meeting, I got hooked up with this chaplain. He goes, hey, you know what? They're starting a new thing here on campus. It's a praise and worship. Now on campus at the rec center. And this vision that God had showed me eight years earlier came back, and I go, you know what? I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go with you. And we go, and I go for four. I remember it was, such, it was so hard for me because I was the social chair of our fraternity. I went four weeks in a row to this worship service, and I began to fall back in love with God. I could see God's love for me. We began to speak God's love. We began to sing God's love. And I thought, my goodness, I have conflicting interests. Our parties have never been bigger. We are now the most popular on campus. I'm one of the most popular guys at WT. Life is great. But then I'm like, but those aren't the things that God called me to do. We had a party. I was the social chair of the fraternity. And when we did it, we did it right. It was big. I liked our party so big that I even invited the other fraternities because I wanted the most people there. Our building would only hold 700. I think it was what it was, packed. I invited 2,000. And I think all of them showed up. And I'll never forget, we're in this fraternity room, and it had to have been 147 degrees in there. And we're standing around there, and the music's blowing, and we're like, yeah. 
That's as much as we can move. So I'm like, this is crazy. I turned to my roommate, I'm like, how much money have we made? And he pulls out, I mean, a wad. I mean, I was like, gee, we did good. Let's shut this thing down. We're good. And this is one of those defining moments in my life and between me and God. As we walked out, we had somebody that we invited, I invited to our party, passed out on the floor and died. Here we go, Lord. I've just spent the four greatest weeks I've had with you in years. You've shown me my calling again. You've showed me how much that you've loved me. Look what I did. Do you think I went back for the fifth week? I didn't go back to church again until McCall made me after we were married. And the only reason I went is because she had some things I needed and wanted. And I thought it was good to keep that relationship going. Because I had other things to do on Sunday morning. And I didn't go to church regularly again until God began to heal our marriage And we found this place. And it's at this place that God showed me his loving kindness. That had never been showed to me before. I heard about God's loving kindness. And even though I heard it from the pulpit, which was over there at the time, and I heard it from my wife and heard it from other people, I didn't want to believe it. I still felt that God was going to get me for what I'd done, what I'd been a part of. Why would somebody love me for what I've done to somebody else? And it wasn't wasn't my fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. It was a bad deal. But that's what I felt God was going to get me. So I met a guy that used to go to church here, and he doesn't live in town anymore. And some of you guys may remember his name is Doug Rollins. And I walk in the door, and I walk through the doors, and this big guy with this big laugh, he comes up and he goes, What's up, brother? I mean, he yells this at me, and I'm like, Golly. And he puts his arms around me and says, I love you, and God loves you. And I'm like, Bro, it's like my second time to come here. So we build this relationship, and he begins to tell me about God's love. And one night, he invites me, after he gets done with one of his deals, to go to the Waffle House over somewhere over there. And at 12 o'clock at night, me and Doug Rollins were arguing about, does God love me or not? And I've given him all these reasons why God shouldn't love me. And he's given me all this scripture why God doesn't. And you're not going to win an argument with Doug Rollins. I'm sorry. You're not going to win an argument with him. So I couldn't win that argument, so I began to argue with McCall. Now, I'm pretty good. I, I, there was a point in my life that I liked to argue, and I liked confrontation, and that, to me that was fun. Not so much anymore. I'm out on that. God showed me the, a better way. But I remember you know, telling McCall, look, I've done this, and I haven't done She's like, it doesn't matter. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And maybe that's where you're at today. I want to encourage you to step out of that. I want to encourage you to dive into God's loving kindness and study it out for yourself. That's what I did. I surrounded myself around people that understand God's loving kindness, and I made sure that I was around him as much as I could. And one day, the light bulb went off. Now, it took a little help from Pastor Jay He actually had to come to my office and threaten me (laughs) 
But the light bulb went off. God does love me. He is love. He's not the king whack-a-mole master. <laughs> right? Amen. See, God is different. That's what Cody said last week. One of the God's characteristics of loving kindness is that he's different. He's holy. He's righteous. He's set apart. And it's good for us to know that. Because as people, we want to compare our relationships that we have now with the relationship that we have with God. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work. We want to put our experiences that we have in our relationships here against the experiences that we have with God. And it doesn't work. Why? Because he's different. And let me tell you how he's different. Let me tell you how he's different in my life. He's different in my life because he's the only person that I've ever met that loves me because of his character versus my conduct. God loves you because of his character, not your conduct. And that's what I hate it when people come to me and go, you know, Pastor Joe, when I get my life straightened out, I'm going to start coming to church again. What a crock of poo. <laughs> that is the biggest lie that, is ever, that Satan's ever given to anybody. We're going to get our life straightened up before we go to church. That goes against God's character. He loves you. He wants you to be intimate. He wants you to be here when the doors are open. But God's the only person that doesn't love me based on my holiness and my works and my actions and my conduct. That's how much he loves you. God is for you. God is for you. I don't know who that's for this morning, but somebody this morning needs to hear, God is for you. And God wants you to hear this, and God wants you to know that God is for you. God loves you. And God wants us to trust him. And because we love him and because we trust him, we can bring our need to him. How many of you have ever taken a need or tried to open yourself up and be vulnerable with somebody just to get hit in the face? All right, Probably all of us in here could raise our hands and say, you know what, there was a time that I wanted to open myself up. I wanted, maybe it was with a pastor or maybe, it, who knows, who knows? But you open yourself up to that love and the trust and bam! You're like, mm, I'm done with that. Done. Mm -mm, never going to do it again. We can't do that with God. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. But God is for us. Turn with me to Psalm 56, 9. Psalm 56, 9. When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. I know this because God is for me. God is for you. I want you to say that. Repeat after me. God, God is, is for, for me. me. Highlight that in your Bible. If God is for you, why would he want to break your leg? I'll never forget a conversation I had in the halls at PD one time. I had a teacher come up to me and she goes, you know, Mr. Dwyer, I'm so glad that God loves me that he only gave me this low grade of cancer so that I can be a witness to him. Now, I'd been to the church like four times when this happened, but even I was like, that has got to be ignorance gone to seed right there. God is for 
you. God is for your spouse. God is for your family. God is for your business. Thank you, Annie. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. We're going to get this into us. We're going to get the Holy Spirit into us, and we're going to get God's love into us, and we're going to get faith into us. Woo, Satan better watch out. Your friends better watch out because they're not going to recognize you. You may have new friends by September. But if we have the character of God inside of us and we're set apart isn't that what's supposed to happen does our character matter absolutely it does what then shall we say to thing these things if god is for us who can be against us Now, these are just two examples, but I could sit here all day and show you scriptures like this. How many scriptures is it going to take for us to get inside of us that God's character is loving kindness and that he loves me and that he is for me? If God didn't love us, he wouldn't have sent us the Holy Spirit. Would you send your enemy, somebody that would come along you, beside you, and counsel you? and help you go through tough things, that'd be the last thing that I would send to somebody. But God loves us so much that he sent us and commissioned the Holy Spirit for us. Are we learning something today? I want to talk about the definition of love for just a second. Here is a quick definition. Intimacy, commitment, and passion. God wants to be intimate with you. He's committed to us. And he has a passion for us. All three of these things are embedded in the character of God. He wants to be intimate with us. He wants to be committed. He is committed to us. He wants to be passionate with us. So my question is, is are we reciprocating those qualities that are already inside of us? It's not like we have to go out and learn how to be intimate. It's not like we have to go out and learn how to be committed. It's not like we have to go out and learn how to be passionate. Those things were put inside of us when we said yes to Jesus, when we were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Those things want to come out of us in our worldly relationships, and they want to come out with our relationship with God, but it is us who stops it. How do we stop that? Well, pick your poison. Pick whatever it is. Whatever it is that you, that's in your life that's hindering you from that, because that's not your true character. I'm going to close with this. We're going to come back next Sunday. I'm going to be here. You guys going to be here on Sunday? Okay, then I'm not going to worry about not getting to the end. I'm going to have the praise team come on up. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Encounter Online family. We hope that you enjoyed the word. We hope that you had your own encounter with God today. Now go out there and have a great week. And also remember, there are three ways to give here at Encounter Church. One is through our website, EncounterAmarillo.com slash give. Or you can download our app in the App Store, Encounter Church. Or you can text to give. Now we hope that you guys have a great week. May God be with you.